2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee rear brake pads and rotors. If you're using a floor jack, you need to break the loaders, the rot, uh, break the lug nuts loose, and then jack it up and support it with a jack stand, hopefully. And then you need to uh, remove the rear tires. And the lug nuts are 21 millimeter. So you get the tires off. And then you need to get to, you need to remove this spring. Pull that spring off like that. Get some tension on it. And then you get underneath it. Okay, push it in like that. Get underneath it, push those little arms out. See how they come out. Release the tension, and then you can remove the spring. <clears throat> then you need to remove the caliper slide pin caps. You get access to the bolts. It's a really tight fit. You can get to the top one, but you can't get to the bottom one with a ratchet. So what you need to do is take your, this is a uh, seven millimeter uh, Allen. If you got it on a socket, take it out of the socket and then get an eight millimeter ratchet wrench like this so you can get access to the bottom because it's way down here in the bottom along the lower control arm. See it? Tight fit there. So you use your ratchet wrench to ratchet the <clears throat> the pin out. You can do the same thing with the top one too. They're not that bad to do with the ratchet wrench. And that's what it looks like. Just get on there. Take them off by hand. Okay. <clears throat> and now that they're loose, you can pull the pins out. Now your caliper's loose. Pull your caliper off. And there she is. There's not much weight, so there's no big deal to hang it. No problem. So I'm gonna remove the outer pad. Now we need to remove the caliper bracket. And those are 18 millimeters. So you can get an 18 millimeter socket on there with a breaker bar and break them loose. You can use a breaker bar on the top one, but you can't uh, get the... Uh, the ratchet head on the lower one because it's too close to the control arm. So what I do is I stick a wrench in there. I hold on to the wrench right here with my left hand. And then I hit the head of the wrench like that with my sledgehammer. Okay? Just to give you an idea. Breaks it loose. Then you can ratchet it out. And then the th threads are pretty clean. So then you can just take it out by hand. You gotta do a little bit, do a little bit more manual labor with your fingers on this one. You get that one out, and you loosen the top one, and then you can thread the top one out also. Okay, you got the copper bracket out. You can see where the pads ride. Sometimes they wear them out a little bit. Put in an indentation in there. What you want to do is take your. Uh, your um, little die grinder with a with a disc on it and clean them up and then put some paint on them okay I cleaned it up <clears throat> don't want to take too much off and just clean it up a little bit now I'm gonna put some paint on it next we need to do is remove the rotor spray around the rotor with some uh, penetrant and then uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep whatever Sometimes they use an O-ring in the factory to hold the rotor on and their rotors and the O-rings in here. So what you need to do is get a pick and pick at that O-ring and pull that O-ring out. Otherwise, it makes that rotor coming off there really hard. It's still kind of frozen on there, so then they need to hit it with a hammer. I'm doing this one-handed, so it's... Really hard to get a good swing, but <clears throat> the vibration.
vibration. Max it loose so you can take it off. You get the idea? Stuck on the uh, parking brake shoes. Tap it around it. Go over here on this side, hold it, and pound it in that way. Do it, just work it off, okay? All right, we got the rotor off. Now you want to do is spray some penetrant into your adjuster for your parking brake shoes. And also for your lever mechanism for your parking brake shoes down here. Put some lube on there. Inspect your brake shoes. Make sure they're not coming off the metal backing plates for the shoe. They look pretty decent still. So now you look at the hub. It's a two-step hub. This part here is a little bit lower than here. So you need to clean the rust off the outer part and the inner part. <clears throat> I use a die grinder, angle die grinder with a disc, and I use the one with the Brillo. And a fine wire brush and a screwdriver to scratch it to remove the rust. All right, the hub is nice and clean. Next step is to push the piston back into the caliper. What you don't want to do is push that brake fluid that's in the system back through the ABS unit. Sometimes that might screw them up. So what you need to do is pinch off the, the uh, brake hose, flex brake hose. Don't squash the shit out of it. Just pinch it to restrict the flow. Break open the bleeder. Put your wrench on there and smack it with a hammer and that breaks it open. Or break it open before you dismount it. And then you need to get a C-clamp in here and push against the pad and onto the caliper and push it in. And that way the fluid comes out the bleeder and you got the bleeder loose instead of going back through the, pushing the fluid back through the ABS unit. So you're kind of like changing the fluid in the caliper at the same time. Okay. Okay, I'm using a pair of uh, channel locks. See, I'm pushing on it, I'm squeezing it together, I'm pushing it in. See how the fluid's coming on and I'm pushing the piston in. Otherwise that fluid will be going right back through the ABS system. And sometimes that screws them up. Okay, piston's pushed all the way back in. Close your bleeder and snug it up and then remove your pliers, your pinchers, okay? Before you put your pad, new pad onto your caliper, put some seal glide inside these pin sleeves and rub it around inside there, get it mixed all around in there really good. Then put your pad on. And then you wanna put some uh, anises on here, a fine film of anises. And then get your rotor and make sure you wash all the oil off the rotor with some uh, soap and water or some uh, glass cleaner or some degreaser. All right, the rotor's on. Time for your bracket, caliper bracket. Put some uh, so glide on where the uh, pads rust and then uh, bolt it up. All right, the bracket and bolt torque is 89 foot pounds. You can do that to the top one for sure. The bottom one is a little harder to get in there with the with the torque wrench, so you're better off just doing it with a a uh, a wrench and and double wrench it, or hit it with the hammer, same way I showed you when you broke it loose. Get an idea of it. So just make it tor tight, and the uh, the caliper pin bolt torque is 18 foot pounds, so do the best with those also. Okay, put the outer pad on. If it's got a squeaker, put it towards the rotation. Okay, towards the rotation. And now you can put your caliper on and then put your caliper pin bolts in there and make sure you get them inside the holes and then hand tighten them. Make sure you put some sill glide on those caliper slide pins before you put them in there. Just rub it all over them and then push them in there and then you can Push them in and you can feel them when you go into the thread holes. And then put your wrench on there and hand, get them started by hand. Don't just ratchet away on them. Caliper sled pins, bolts are tight. 
put the little caps back on over them. I might have forgot to tell you to remove them in the beginning. But, oh well. <laughs> anyway, they're in there. Now what you need to do is put that spring in. This is the spring. See the little hook right here? Them go into the hole on the inside there. They hook inside there. So make sure those are hooked inside. And what you want to do is always kind of start it like this and then pry it over. Take one side in. Also try doing it like that. But better off starting off putting the bottom in first and then work the top over with your screwdriver. Okay. All right, we got the clip in there, the spring clip. Make sure those hooks are st stuck in there. I always hit them with the, the, the blunt head of the screwdriver to make sure everything's in there good. So it all looks good. Everything's torqued. Um, other than that, you can do the other side and do it the same way. Another thing I need to bring up is make sure that you got the caliper on right, that this brake line is not twisted looking like some funny looking thing. Make sure it's nice and clean. Otherwise you have to take it off and remount it. But it all looks good. Now all you need to do is put the tires on. Oh, wait, because we broke the system open. <clears throat> We need to gravity bleed our brakes because I had it open when I pushed the pads in. So we need to do is break open the bleeder and let it drip a little bit and make sure no air comes out. I got some air out. I've seen the bubbles. But I'm gonna, if, it, if this is your car, most likely it is, and you can do this all the time. So what you wanna do is put some uh, anesthes on your thread so it doesn't freeze in there for the next time when you need to bleed your brakes or do your brakes, okay? So if you want to flush your brake system, what you can do is just let it sit there and drip. And as it's dripping, you go up to your reservoir and keep adding fluid. Do not allow the reservoir to run dry. What you want to do is you want this to drip until the fluid comes out clear, not yellow. Okay? If you got a vacuum operated brake bleeder or a sucker, you can hook that onto the bleeder and suck the fluid out. I'm gonna do that for a little bit to get the fluid in there and make sure it's not coming out yellow no more. If you remove quite a bit, make sure you double check your reservoir and add fluid to it because you don't want it to run dry. Okay? If you have one of these suckers, you can go suck out the brick reservoir and then put in new fluid before you start to do this. So you're actually putting new fluid into the system ahead of time. So you're not wasting a lot of time. So I got quite a bit of fluid in here, so I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna see what the fluid looks like when it's dripping. Remember how yellow the fluid was when it was dripping before? But now it's coming out pretty clear. So I think we accomplished that. Okay, so now all I need to do is just let it drip a little bit more and make sure that the, all the air is out of the system, which we know pretty much is. So now I'm going to snug up my uh, bleeder and be done doing that on this side. <laughs> anyway, but okay. We blood it, we put the little rubber cap back on. Everything's tight. So now I need to do is put our tires on. And uh, one other thing is, we always put that O-ring back on that we took off too. I always forget about that thing. I need to find it. All right, found it. All wound up on the floor in a ball. All right, I got it on there. Okay, hmm, that's staying. Okay, good. All right, so now we put the tire on. You got both sides done, 
put your tires on and uh, torque them to 100 foot pounds and then bring the vehicle down on the floor go inside start it up pump your brake pedal make sure you have a good firm brake pedal before you go put it in the driver reverse okay and then go underneath the hood double check your fluid level and make sure your reservoir caps on and that's it you did your brakes uh, if i helped you with this video you can help me by subscribing if you already subscribed to me that's great i really appreciate it you have a good uh good evening